the Prophet ﷺ said, every single Rasul has warned his Ummah about Dajjal from the time of Nuh salam, And I too shall warn you about the Dajjal. Now, this is actually very interesting for us as Muslims. Why? The Prophet ﷺ is saying, the concept of Dajjal is found in all previous traditions. And guess what? We find it very clearly in the Christian tradition. As for the Jewish tradition, I have just scratched the surface. I'm not an expert, but I did my research. It appears that they don't really have this concept of the false Jesus. But believe it or not, some sects of the Jews have the concept of the false David, Hajibullah. The false Dawood. And Allah knows best, but it appears to be that because they took David as their main figure, and the folklore remains about the false one coming, so they took their main figure, David, and they made a contrary figure of him. There shall be a false king, David, and Allah knows best. And this is a small segment of the Yahud. And by the way, the vast majority of modern Jews, they have abandoned these types of tales. They no longer believe in this anyway, as you know. The vast majority of them, they just look at these as folkloric traditions. And in fact, many of them don't even consider their law binding anymore. As you know, they are what they call modern, modern or reform uh, uh, Jews. And that's a whole different, that's the majority of American Jews. You should all know this. Another tangent, but this is known. You should know this as American Muslims, you should know. There are three main firqas of, Yehud, of Jews in America. Number one, number one, that's the smallest. You want to begin with the smallest? No, no problem. Orthodox. This is the smallest, maybe 10 to 15%. And they are the strictest, and they are the literalists, and they want the ones who you can, you know, and they, they have many firaq as well, and they have the Hasidics and whatnot. Number two is conservative, maybe around 20, 25%, the next larger. But the majority are, number three, reform. And reform essentially. There is no aqidah they have to believe in at all. And there is no sharia they have to follow. They are more of a civilization. So what I'm saying, one group says the false King David, this is one group of the Orthodox. Very, very, very small percentage. Majority of them, these are just folklore tales they don't care about, it's gone. But my point is interesting here. The concept of the false Messiah or the false David is there amongst one group. Where did it come from? The Prophet said, Every prophet warned. So we believe the prophet Musa would have warned. We believe this. That remained. And it was then taken by some group and converted this way. As for mainstream Christians, Baptist Christians, evangelical Christians, most mainline Protestant Christians, they firmly believe in the figure of the Antichrist. They call him the Antichrist. And they believe in this thing called the beast. And they say the symbol of the beast is 666. So these are interesting for us as Muslims. Now, you have two ways of looking at it. If you're a complete secular atheist who doesn't believe in God and whatnot, you say, oh, look at these religions. Their folklore is the same. Their mythology is the same. The Antichrist, the Antichrist, 666, the beast, whatnot. Or you can flip it around exactly and say the very fact that two different civilizations and two different faith traditions that have no causal relationship with one another are saying the exact same thing means there must be a common origin and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, you can look at the two exact same things and then figure out what you want to do. Same thing goes for the great flood. Again, a bit of a tangent, but again, this all interesting stuff. Do you know, my dear brothers and sisters, that every single civilization in the world has the myth of a great flood? The native Indians in this land, they have a myth of a great flood that took place once upon a time. The Aborigines in Australia, and they are the most disconnected of humanity. For 20,000 years, they lived separate from the rest of humanity until Cook discovered them in 17... 53 when he whatever did the coast of whatever Australia he discovered them for 20,000 years the Aborigines were cut off from the rest of mankind and guess what they have the myth of a great flood the Bible has the great flood the Quran has the flood right the uh, origin stories of ancient Babylon have the great flood now 
what is the secular skeptic say? Ha, look at these mythologies, they're all the same. You can flip it around 180 and say what? Why do all of these civilizations have a great flood myth? Because there was a great flood. And all of these are coming from the great flood. You see what I'm saying here, right? Yani the glass is half full, half empty. The same thing can be flipped around and rather than deny faith, you can say, but it makes sense therefore. How could the Aborigines and the native Indians both have the great flood myth? How is that even possible? Think about it. Now true, the details are very different, right? But that's because when you pass a fact from one person to one person to one person, what happens, right? You can even try it at home, get 10 people, right? To stand together and just do it. And you will be shocked at what you see. Even hadith narrators might find themselves to be weak. Wallahi billah. Allah mustaan. Internal joke. Um, so, where was I? The great flood myth. Hmm? <laughs> You're all lost. <laughs> I apologize for drowning you in all of this great flood myth. Something about the jal. Let's get back to the jal. The notion that every single civilization. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, it has some notion of an evil entity that shall deceive mankind towards the end of times. Isn't it interesting? Isn't it something that makes you think, right? And there are so many, you know, these, these folkloric movies that are made by Hollywood, right? That, you know, the Antichrist is going to come. You know, there's many of these. It's in their psyche. It's in their civilization and culture. Rather than flip it around and say, oh, mythology, we say there is a common origin. So our Prophet ﷺ said, every Prophet has warned his ummah about the Dajjal from the time of Nuh ﷺ. He also told us that I shall tell you something that nobody has told before me. So he's going to give a, an interesting fact that no prophet before has mentioned. Now, by the way, I find it interesting personally that if you look at the folklore of the non-Muslims, the Christians, they also have in their folklore that the Dajjal shall be born to a family that is righteous overall and is praying for a child for a long time. And that the child will come and will flip on the parents. This is something in their folklore. We find it in our traditions as well. Okay? Um, and one thing we do not find in Christian folklore at all, in Jewish folklore, is that the Dajjal will be deformed. And what do we find in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim? The Prophet is saying, I will tell you something that no other Prophet told his people. That the Dajjal will be deformed. Subhanallah. Look. Do you, see, do you guys understand what I'm saying here? You guys understand what I'm saying? Certain issues of the Judeo-Christian folklore matches with ours. This one thing that the Prophet ﷺ said, I am telling you and no Prophet before me told his people, is that he shall be born and one of his eyes is deformed. And guess what? That is not found in any of the Judeo-Christian folkloric tradition. Isn't that amazing? And this is a sign of Iman for us. Now, is it the right eye or the left eye? A huge controversy between our scholars, which is very little, yani, not much of a you know, fruitful discussion for us. Some ulama say, some ulama say, both of his eyes are going to be, because I'll tell you what is the issue. Once again, authentic hadith seem to, seem to potentially contradict. One hadith mentions his right eye will be like a grape. One hadith mentions left eye will be like fested, putrid. Does it mean that one of the narrators messed up and the process of either said right or left and then or does it mean both eyes are messed up Allah knows best Allah knows best yani some ulama try to make jama and they say but it appears to me that Allah knows best that one eye is going to be uh, messed up and the other eye will be normal so this is something the Prophet mentioned that the, the one of the eyes will appear like a, a, a rotten grape so you know a grape that you leave it for a while, it pops open, there's a brownish area, disgusting to look at, that will be the eye of the Dajjal. So, the Prophet is saying, recognize that man when you see him, that will be one eye that will be open, and evil, and putrid, and festering, and what disgusting, that is one of the signs of uh, the Dajjal. Another uh, sign is that the Dajjal will appear like a young man. 
So he's not going to be an old person. He will appear like a young man. Yeah, he's 20, 30 years old. He's not going to be 50, 60, 70. His shakal, his facial features will be that of a young man. Another sign the Prophet mentioned that the Dajjal will have curly hair. So he's not going to have straight hair. He's going to have curly hair. Okay? You don't need to look at your fellow friends and <laughs> measure him. What not? Calm down, bro. Bismillah. Let us pray none of your friends are Dajjal. Or else that makes you the supporter of Dajjal. So look at it that way. When you make fun of your friend as a potential Dajjal, you become the supporter of the potential Dajjal. So be careful who you make fun of. So another sign is that the hair is going to be curly. And one of the signs that we are all aware of, we are all aware of, the Prophet ﷺ said, every Muslim with an ounce of Iman shall recognize the words kafir written on the forehead of Dajjal. Now this sign is a sign of Iman. It is not a physical sign because the kafir will see Dajjal and not see anything. Right? It is something that Allah will give to the believer. This is the eyes of the qalb, not the eyes of the heart, not the eyes of the, 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 the physical eyes. So the mu'min will see the Dajjal and will see written on him kafir. And then to emphasize the point, the Prophet spelled it out. Kafara will be written. Kafir will be written on his forehead. So this is something that is also authentically mentioned. As well, our Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that the Dajjal shall travel the whole world, will visit every city. Now, when, every, any, when something mentions in the Quran, everything or every city or every issue, some people want to interpret this literally that every single small village shall be visited by Dajjal. We need to understand the word Kullu in Arabic. We should know this as Arabic. The word Kullu does not necessarily mean the English every. It can mean a lot of. It can mean a lot of. And it can mean every. You understand? So the word kul in Arabic does not necessarily mean every in English. It could also mean a lot of. And we know this from the Quran and Sunnah. Allah says in the Quran, to dammiru kulla shay'in bi amri rabbiha. The wind of Thamud destroyed everything. But it's not everything. Did the wind that was sent to Thamud destroy the rest of the world? But Allah says, Kulla shay. So the word Kullu, and also, Woman Kulli Shayn Khalaqna Zawjaini. This is one of those things that, you know, if you log, you know, some people leave Islam, the Murtads, for the most trivial reasons, because their own ignorance doesn't understand the Quran. When they don't understand the Quran, they end up rejecting Islam. And I've read online one of the famous murtads who is rejecting Islam and making fun of it. He goes, look, the Quran says, وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَا زوجين, And the amoeba is not zawjain. Because of this, it becomes kafir. And I say his mind is the size of an amoeba. That's why he became kafir. Doesn't know basic Arabic. When Allah says, وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَا زوجين, it does not mean that every single species must be Zawjain. It could mean the default is Zawjain, and that is the reality. Doesn't mean that every single entity has to have Zawjain. You can have asexual reproduction, which takes place in our world. See where I went from where to where, subhanAllah. Uh, we have five minutes left. Inshallah, we will continue this. Are there any quick questions? I apologize. I do apologize, actually, I'm uh, coming back from Hajj, so my mind is not fully... I have wandered today more than I typically do. So I apologize for that, but uh, my mind is not fully recovered. Make dua that, inshallah, we can get back on good health, so that I can, inshallah, get back on a more concise lecture. I was hoping to do double this amount today. We might have to have three lectures on Dajjal. I hope you guys don't mind, but we'll go into more detail, inshallah. So now we have a few minutes for Q&A before Salat al-Isha. Bismillah, yes. So this is a very good question by our brother that how if we say according to Shaykh Rashid Rida and others if we say that the hadith of Tamim al-Dari is not authentic how did it happen? Did the Sahaba suffer suffer the mess up? We have to realize the average chain of narrators between Imam Muslim, Imam Bukhari and the Prophet is six people. 
don't jump right at the Sahaba. There's plenty of people in the middle where, and this is actually well known for those who study hadith, sometimes the third, fourth narration, and this is very common, he might have heard something from someone, and when years go by, he assumes he heard it from a narrator of hadith, and he then projects it mistakenly. Mistakenly, he projects it to a hadith, and it's not a hadith. Okay? And this is the job of the more discerning scholars to sift through. And that's why I said, do we even want to open this door? And I said the majority did not open this door, which is why they considered the hadith of Tamim to be authentic. And no, not about, no, you get Umar bin Khattab or Ibn Sayyad, not Tamim al Dari. No, no, no. Umar ibn al-Khattab passed away very early on. We do not know how much he was monitoring Ibn al-Sayyad towards the end of his life. So Allah knows best. Umar ibn al-Khattab, he passed away as we know, يعني, you know, in the 12th year of the Hijrah, 13th year of the Hijrah. Ibn Sayyad lived many years after this. So he himself was unclear because he was unclear. His children, Hafsa and Umar ibn Umar were also unclear. But the majority of Tabi'un and later scholars realized, and Ibn Taymiyyah and others mentioned this, that there is no way that Ibn Sayyad could be the actual Dajjal. And this doubt came because they witnessed him interacting with the Prophet Wasallam. So no doubt when they saw the evil that was in him, so they have some doubt. Even Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, we saw in his narration, the rumors spread until the end of his life. And even Abu Sa'id al-Khudri is like, I don't know what to do with this guy. So those things, we have to understand that the doubts of, of the Sahaba Ibn Sayyad were a temporary one because of that time frame. You understand what I'm saying here? Once situation goes on and it's clear that had he been that actual Dajjal, he wouldn't have done all that he had done. So then we can now verify and say he was not that big Dajjal, he was one of the minor Dajjals. Sisters, any questions? Back to the brothers. Yes, Bismillah. Do we just mention? Oh, Ibn Sayyad. No, no, no. The Prophet did not see Ibn Sayyad having kafara on him. Also, Ibn Sayyad was a child in the time of the Prophet. And the doubt was is he going to grow up and become that Dajjal? Right? So, from the traditions we learn, that the Dajjal will grow up in a regular household and he will become Dajjal in a day. Like Hafsa said, something will happen to make him angry. Then something's gonna happen and then he, the Dajjal will appear out. Before that, he's just an evil person. So this is the doubt. Was this Ibn Sayyad that evil person? No, the minor Dajjals are not going to have Kafara and they're not going to have A'war, no. Why did they think? But they were worried Ibn Sayyad might become the Dajjal. And when he becomes the Dajjal, Kafir will appear. When he becomes the Dajjal, all of the signs are going to come. They will show. That was the issue, okay? Final question, then we'll conclude. So, uh, if he's just accusing from Bani Adam, right? He is from the children of Adam, yes. Okay, so 